This is Sunny Efron with the National Press Foundation. I want to welcome you to our program this morning. Um, I'm really delighted to have here with us Jennifer Hillman, also a former trade official at both the WTO um, and USTR, and Bryce Bashuk, who is joining us from Geneva to tell us about what is the latest in the uh, rather upset, upside down race um, to find and uh, agree on a new leader for the WTO. But more broadly, we'll be talking this morning about the fate of the WTO and specifically for journalists, including uh, US journalists who don't ordinary, ordinarily cover trade. So Jennifer, thank you so much, over to you. Well, thank you, Sunny, and it is really a delight and an honor to be here and to follow on Andrea's, I think, very, very crisp and clear presentation. I also really do want to join her in thanking the National Press Foundation for all it's doing to try to build understanding uh, around these, these very complicated trade issues. So I do want to talk a little bit about what's going to happen on the trade policy front, either if uh, President Trump were to be reelected or if there were to be a Biden administration. But as Sonny noted, I want to be very clear that I am in no way speaking for the Biden campaign. What I would reflect is simply what Vice President Biden has already said, um, either when he was the vice president or on the cam campaign trail. And similarly, anything about the Trump administration, I'm drawing from the president's actual words or, or actions. Um, so what should we expect um, if uh, Trump is reelected? I think the answer is mostly more of the same, uh, which means at least four of the following, I think, important things. First, I think you, what you would see is a continuation of and possibly additional unilateral tariffs. And when I say unilateral tariffs, I think it's important to understand that that means that they are illegal under the WTO's rules. I think you can see President Trump has repeatedly described himself as the tariff man um, and has also repeatedly said, and I would note erroneously, that somehow it's foreigners that pay for these tariffs, when in reality tariffs are paid by the American importers that are bringing the goods in. But there's no question that President Trump likes and favors trade tariffs. So I think we can expect more tariffs. Uh, despite the fact that, I think in my view, the tariffs that we have in place have not done what they were purported to do. They have not made our steel or our aluminum industries more vibrant or improved our national security. They have not brought about significant change in China's unfair trading practices. And because they violate our WTO obligations to charge no more in tariffs, than we agreed to in our tariff schedule, um, they are promoting a, a sense of kind of lawlessness and chaos um, in the trading system. I mean, at its very core, for example, the United States agreed through a series of negotiations to charge a tariff of no more than zero percent um, on imports of steel. And yet one of the first acts that the Trump administration took uh, was through the result of this national security investigation to start charging a 25 percent tariff on all steel imports. So again, an immediate notion that we're that the Trump administration favors tariffs even when they're not legal, uh, even when they're imposed in this unilateral way. I think the second thing we could expect from a Trump administration is a continuing disdain for multilateral organizations, including the WTO, and for multilateral rules. Uh, I think if you look at it, the president has threatened on and off that the United States would withdraw from the WTO. Hence the reason I think that you see this in Andrea's polling, um, that there has been this consistent threat of we need to pull out of the WTO, that the WTO has somehow been unfair to the United States, that the WTO has failed. Um, I think the president continues to say that he, he will or may withdraw the United States, notwithstanding the fact that it would take an act of Congress to do that. He's clearly made it clear that his view is that the United States is better off with a might makes right sort of power based trading system rather than one that's based on rules. Uh, to me, the truth is that we need the WTO and its rules based system for a number of reasons. But the two most important ones um, are I'm going to I'm going to piggyback on what Andrea has said is that it protects American goods farm products, services, intellectual property rights from being discriminated against in foreign markets. No one can decide that they want to impose a higher tariff or bar American goods just because they're American. I mean, you can't just say, OK, I don't like uh, America for this reason or that reason, and therefore I'm going to put restraints on American goods. 
Secondly, um, to me, uh, the WTO provides stability and predictability to everyone. Among, to me, the many problems with the Trump administration's policies have been the uncertainty of them. No one knows whether tariffs are going to be imposed, whether there's going to be um, exclusions from the tariffs granted or not, whether changes will be made. And everyone, therefore, has less confidence to make long-term contracts or investments. Um, and, and these decisions often disrupt trade by imposing tariffs on goods that are already on the water, already under contract before you even knew about it. The third thing I think that you can expect from a Trump administration is the continuation of approaching trade largely through bilateral or unilateral approaches. Um, and that means fundamentally smaller trade deals that are not nearly as comprehensive um, as, a, as a broader multilateral agreement might be. And secondly, this going small, going unilateral means that the U.S. will continue to cede leadership, uh, particularly to China. Um, while you've seen some cutbacks recently from China, China is unequivocally moving ahead with its massive Belt and Road Initiative and its efforts at regional trade agreements through RCEP and others, and by ensuring that Chinese nationals have prominent roles in the WTO and other multilateral organizations. And fourth, I would say with respect to the WTO's dispute settlement system, a Trump re-election means a semi-permanent end to the WTO appellate body and with it to, I think, the binding rules-based system. I think ever since May of 2017, when the United States began blocking the appointment of new members uh, to sit on the appellate body and extensively outlining a lot of longstanding U.S. concerns, our trading partners have been asking the basic question, is the goal of the United States to reform the appellate body or to destroy it? And I think this summer we've gotten a very clear answer. For the Trump administration, the goal is to kill the appellate body. Um, I think you see the response of the rest of the world is both great frustration with the United States and a decision to move ahead without us. So you've seen 22 countries, including the EU, China, Canada, Mexico, others, form what they're calling a multi-party interim arbitration arrangement to try to do this notion of appeals um, under an arbitration process, uh, which, again, has a lot of great potential, but fundamentally um, doesn't bind countries like the United States that refuse to be a party to it. So what would change if there were a Biden administration. And again, I want to remind everyone I am not speaking for the Biden uh, campaign, um, but I would think you would see at least three very significant changes. First, I would expect a Biden administration to support a reformed WTO and the rules-based system that goes with it. Um, I would expect a Biden administration to fully engage in the process of reforming and revitalizing the WTO, including its dispute settlement system. I think you hear very clearly Vice President recognizing the critical role that the United States has played, both in forming the WTO at its, at its beginning um, and his desire to work with allies to confront China. And that means including through the WTO and the WTO dispute settlement system. I would imagine the Biden administration to also use the WTO as a key forum to work with allies to achieve agreements on a number of the critical issues that are pending before the WTO right now. And that includes everything from getting disciplines on fisheries subsidies that are leading to overfishing and depleting our oceans, uh, to new global rules governing e-commerce and digital trade, but also to use the WTO as a place to pursue his objectives of including protections for workers, for the environment, and for public health in a broader trade agenda. I would also see a Biden administration using efforts to reform and revitalize the WTO as part of its work to dampen the amount of chaos that we're now seeing um, in the trading system. Secondly, I would expect the Biden administration to, re to, to really emphasize a recognition between a linkage on investments at home and trade policy abroad, with Vice President Biden already making it clear that he does not favor new trade agreements until investments are made in infrastructure, technology, and training so that American workers are given the tools that they need to compete in the 21st century. I think you've clearly seen Vice President Biden's statements on that, and it is a recognition of how out of step the United States is with much of the rest of the developed world. I mean, if you look, for example, at the amount of long 
of spending on long-term worker training, investment in our workers, uh, in worker health care, in worker training, in worker development. Most of the rest of the OECD countries spend between 2 and 3 percent of their entire GDP on that long-term worker support. In the United States, the number is 0.27 percent. We simply are not investing in our workers or giving them the tools that they need to be competitive in a globalized trade world. And I think that is one of the clear things that where I think, think you would see a change between the Trump administration and, and a Biden administration. And the third big change uh, that I think you would see if Biden uh, administration were to come in is work to restore trust um, in America that has been lost under President Trump. I think very few of our trading partners believe that they can trust us. I mean, if you look at it, the ink was hardly dry on the USMCA before President Trump threatened to put new tariffs on all, all goods coming in from Mexico over immigration issues. I mean, if we look more recently, less than a month after the USMCA entered into force just this July, the Trump administration reimposed tariffs on aluminum coming in from Canada um, and it required an enhanced monitoring of steel exports coming out of Mexico. If you flip to looking at what's happened with China, um, when the initial 301 reports came out saying China is to be condemned for its theft of intellectual property, its forced technology transfers, and at some level for the sort of subsidies and state-owned enterprises and a lot of other unfair trading practices, the rest of the world agreed with the, Uni with the United States that we were right. But what did the Trump administration then do? They went and cut a deal um, that at its heart simply says all you need to do to get out of this China is buy more American goods, $200 billion worth more of American goods, which basically means buy less of everybody else's goods. So immediately the rest of the world is sort of set aside, pushed away from uh, this idea of joining with the United States to go after China. So, so again, I, I think the broad message from a Biden administration would be to work to restore that kind of trust. At the WTO, um, in particular, I think you see the U.S. has put forward a number of proposals, some of which were even begun under the Obama administration to alter the notion that countries can self-declare themselves to be developed, developing countries in order to get special and differential treatment. You've seen the U.S. put forward proposals on transparency and the need uh, to, to make countries be accountable to their requirement to provide um, notifications of everything from subsidies to trade barriers. Um, but the proposals have been greeted with some degree of suspicion about whether the United States is really out to undermine the WTO, uh, given its singular willingness to, to take down the appellate body with no plans to, to fix it or to engage in it. So I think a Biden administration would work very hard to restore faith that you can take the United States at its word and that when the United States puts trade proposals on the ta table, it's doing so in good faith to restore a better trading system for all. So while there may be a lot of overlaps, uh, I think at its core, the approach of a Biden administration versus the Trump administration would be quite different. And you see that most directly at the WTO in the notion that I think a Trump administration has had little faith in the multilateral system, whereas I think a Biden administration believes first and foremost in working with allies, with multilateral institutions, and fundamentally a belief in a rules-based system.